my uh, audience ages and grays. Uh -huh. Yeah. Not that I would ever do that. Never. They keep coming up to me and tell me to slow down, and I'm reaching a crisis point because I can't do a slow delivery necessarily. Uh -huh. So yeah. I may lose that crowd. But Hopefully, they'll invent another generation that'll come along and like it at that speed. Well, you got the Occupy people now. That's a whole new generation of people who listen to your stuff. And such an interesting culture. I mean, I don't claim to understand everything that goes on in popular culture since 1971. Uh huh. But I try. To I've always hated. Blockbuster, yeah. Starbucks almost as much. If I'm not boycotting three oil companies, I start to feel kind of out of touch. I wouldn't be seen near Nordstrom's or any such. When it comes down to it, deep down, what I really hate is Walmart. I don't like whips. I don't like chains. I don't go chopping up my neighbor's brains. Don't really even like shopping, except at the flea market. I hate Walmart. I used to like to drive around, stop in three or four towns, examine different sights and sounds, different if not unique. I boycott Burger King, I boycott New King Rich, I boycott everything which I've seen advertised. I used to go out to dinner in a diner, now they say fast food is fine, but it tastes like it fell out of the airliner. It's enough to make you weep. Everyone I meet is a high-tech dealer, wants to sell me a digital potato peeler. At least we still got good old Garrison Keeler, but he's so white. Turn on my radio dial, I like to hear something new once in a while, but it's the same old stuff in a brand new style. Still I try to pick and choose, turn the dial but I always lose. They only play the worst rock and roll, and once in a while if you're lucky, one little old rhythm and blues, and that's why. God made MP3s. Which you can't buy at Walmart. MP3s. You can? No, I don't think you can. Cannot? I don't think you can. Well, unless they have a download. The thing. one thing that. Uh, do they not yeah. have any zeros and ones down there for sale? I don't think so. I don't know. What do are they? they have acoustic? An presence? Analog? <laughs> They're analog. It's an analog department store? I think so. I think so. Well, no, you can get digital stuff. I wrote a later version of that song that was entirely about their labor relations when I realized that I was reacting purely culturally to homogenization. Mm -hmm. And then you find out, of course, how they destroy small business. Well, that's in there to some extent. Yeah. And then when you take a bigger frame, you back up and you find out what happens to water and how Coca-Cola steals all the water from farmers in India, which causes them to kill themselves and stuff. And then you start to get depressed and you just don't have culture anymore if you're no. de too depressed. No. Well, you, can you have culture in a barren wasteland? I guess you can. It's just a different kind of culture. In the desert? There's a desert culture, Bedouins and such. Of course. Yeah. Wonderful yeah. music. That's right. Desert music. Uh -huh. They're wailing. Jennings, uh -huh. they are out there. They are. They're yeah. out there. They, they are out there in the desert. So, uh, but Walmart, uh, I know that, uh, what, didn't they kill uh, Levi's? Didn't Walmart kill Levi's? You know, I was never such a big fan of small business as when I saw big business. And then I realized how great small business was. Uh -huh. Not that Levi's was small. No, no, they, they were small, but they tried to get, they weren't small, they were, they were huge. They tried to get bigger, and they sold, themselves, they sold their souls to And when Walmart. you have Blockbuster come along and wipe out every independent uh, video, video store that sells uh, and rents uh, independent and foreign films, and then uh, Netflix comes around and wipes out Blockbuster, mm -hmm. how sad am I supposed to be? Not for Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, well... Maybe it'll turn back around again. I, I, I don't know. Well, yeah. uh, in now some it's parts of the country, like here in Eugene, you have a tremendous creativity at the grassroots level for, for local business and business that is, uh, has a character and a flavor. And I mean, you have that in neighborhoods in, in, in New York. And uh, I don't think history goes in a straight line to bigger, 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 bigger. Mm -hmm. I think both things happen at once. We have something we never had. We have the UN, which is not very effective, but this is something that we have now, worldwide relations and now on the internet, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we don't have local cultures. I do worry about that. Uh, uh, Greg Brown had a wonderful song about this, Your Town Now, where he talks about young people going out and do they go to a place that's exactly like a place in every other town or do they have a sense of their locale and where they are on the planet yeah. with a different kind of tree and a different kind of local yogurt, you know, and this kind of thing. Or they go to the mall, which is, this, you know, stamped all across America, the same, same culture. Yeah. And the mall has made it 
difficult to do political work because it's private property and what you do is you, you, take, you, you take a scissor and you cut out all the business and you put it in one place and separate it from City Hall and the parks and everything else. So then when you start to humanize them all as they're now doing where you're having places to sit and mm -hmm. places where you could maybe even a library branch or I don't know what, it gradually, because all the people are there, they want more amenities and begins to grow back towards what we call the public sphere, right? And yet, it's still privately owned and controlled, so you can't come in there and have a movement about, oh, let's say, what not to buy, mm -hmm. right? You can't come in there with your boycott stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. it's private property. Yeah. And, and the police will even come out when you're in front of the Bank of America uh, demonstrating like they do here every week and uh, like my mother's group does in uh, Bergen County, New Jersey. They'll come out and tell you you can't be on that sidewalk. Well, anybody knows yeah. the sidewalk is the last public property there is, and of course you can be there. Right, but, but they'll you tell you that. you can't step into the drive in the parking lot, though. No, not the parking lot. And so, like, I used to go out to Walmart to demonstrate, uh -huh. and the parking lot is what's between the public sphere and the private sphere. But the private owns it, so you can't get in there. Mm -hmm. So you're like a mile up there on the sidewalk, and everybody's in their in tank it. or their Hummer, and they don't even see mm -hmm. social issues right in front of them. Right, no. democracy on the street, right in front of them, they don't see it. Uh huh. Yeah, it makes I it difficult. Even... But that's why Occupy is so important because yeah. they don't care about those rules. No, they don't. Yeah, yeah. Get out there on Black Friday and sing uh, anti-Christmas carols. Go anywhere. Yeah. Be arrested for singing anywhere. That's right. Yeah. You ain't been doing nothing if you ain't been arrested for singing. Yeah. Have you managed to get arrested for singing yet? Not lately. Uh, what well, a shameful! You called me on it. I did. Oh, <laughs> I feel bad about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we. we uh, one thing that I'm not entirely positive, Walmart, does, is Walmart a, a, a scourge in the environment, though? Right, because Walmart is a continuation of, of sprawl, which encourages the car culture and encourages you to go farther and farther in order to do your shopping, which encourages the, the uh, expansion of roads mm -hmm. and, um, and nothing uh, local-based, no, no, no walk to the shop, walk to work, none of that. So that's yeah. one way that it is. And, of course, the fact of transportation of products from, from uh, great distances is a tremendous waste of um, not only expensive but of um, petroleum and uh -huh. this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so now you get okay. to the point where it has become cost effective because prices are up uh, to pull out uh, resources from the earth that at one time would have been too expensive such as the uh, shale oil mm. uh, and natural gas. Um, and the dirty oil that you now see in Canada, uh, uh, in the tar sands, or in Venezuela, which was formerly not counted as oil. I mean, uh, Venezuela is now a big oil producer because they're counting something they didn't use to count. Right? I, I hear, I hear. It's actually considered. Um, uh, it's not. It's not true. It's not true crude. It's not true oil. When they pull it out, they actually have to add um, hydrogen or something to it in order to make it burn. And, it, it, you, and you watch, they're going to corner the market on hydrogen, these oil companies, so then the rest of us can't get any. We'll be sitting around here with water with no hydrogen in it because they took it all. We'll just be breathing our water. You heard it here first. All right. All right. This is groundbreaking. This is a groundbreaking discussion. We're, so, we're, not, we're not solving any problems, but we are certainly creating them here. That's right. Or, or anyway, right. we're describing them. Yeah, we are. We are. And, and groundbreaking itself is what they're doing to get the, the shale out. Well, now, all over this country, and I saw a map wide swaths of the earth have the shale. What in uh, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, you have what you call the Marcellus shale, mm -hmm. right? Um, so in order to get the trapped energy that's in there, you shoot a very high powered combination of water uh, and a bunch of chemicals at a very high pressure. You shoot it in and you fracture. Which is where you get the, the name. structure. And that's yeah. where you get the fracking terminology. And then the water goes into the uh, uh, water supply, possibly will even go into uh, New York's uh, famously good uh, water that comes down out of the Adirondacks there. Uh -huh. And um, and then you get people out there in uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, lighting their water faucet on fire. See, they look at the movie uh, Gasland, it's in there, right? Mm -hmm. on, yeah. What was that thing? YouTube, yeah. You, yeah, YouTube will do it, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, a bunch of us got together and did an album of songs about this as a benefit for local organizations working on that. Uh -huh. And uh, this was one of them that, that I put together. I think uh, a couple things about this song. It might appear there's kind of marginally uh, legal words in it, but they're not. It just kind of sounds like that. All right. And it's the first song I've ever written that has the footnotes to the research right in the song. They're right there. All right. What the frack are they thinking? What the frack are they been drinking? Quality sinking 
but the frackety frack I don't need the gas. They want to shoot us up with chemicals, I don't mean to be polemical, but shooting chemicals into rocks, is that really thinking outside the box? I know an easier way to get gas, eat beans and kiss my asterisk. Footnote one, it would be more fun to get your power from the sun, sun. And we really have sinned by ignoring the wind and the waves. And they're fracking in Texas, we get some of that fracking oil. They're determined to hex us, enough to bring your blood to a boil. What the frack, we gotta foil these fracking freak show. Cut the power to the fossil fuel clique. You know what the frack are they thinking? What the frack have they been drinking? Our water quality sinking. What the frackity frack don't need decay.